Okay, so let's continue talking about what are electromagnetic waves. And so the next thing is that electromagnetic waves are caused by accelerating electric charges. Notice I said accelerating electric charges. So if a charge is just sitting there, so let's say that it is a positive electrical charge and it's just sitting there, we know it creates what around it? What kind of a field would it create? So it creates the electric field. And so to, to determine the direction of that electric field, we used a teeny tiny positive ch test charge and we let it go and we observe what direction does it go. So that this one would go up, if we put it over here, it would go sideways. If we put it down here, it would go down. And so in two dimensions, it looks like spokes on a wheel, but in fact, it would be more like a pin cushion. So it's going to have charges, or it's gonna have lines that are emanating from this charge in all different directions. Okay, what about its magnetic field? So this was its electric field, E, but what about its magnetic field? It doesn't have one. So if the charge is just sitting there, what's its speed? Zero. And in order to make magnetism, you needed to have a moving electrical charge. All right, so let's let it move. So if this electrical charge was to move with a constant speed, it then still has its electric field. So this electric field would be carried along with the charge sideways. But in addition to that electric field, it would start to make a magnetic field. So do you remember that if you had a, uh, a, a current that was going sideways, you could use your right hand and then you would curl your fingers around it. Okay, the, so the thumb is going to point in the direction of a positive current. And so you see how my fingers are curling around the wire. And so this would make a series of magnetic fields that would be doing this. So it's a circle within a circle and then it was circles next to circles that were going around the wire, and then uh, that would be the magnetic field being generated by this positive charge as it was moving with a constant speed. Okay, now though, we want to accelerate the positive charge. So it's still gonna have a speed V, but it could be increasing, it could be decreasing, it's changing. So if the speed is changing, we say that's an acceleration. So if the charge is accelerating, what's gonna happen is, now this was the magnetic field. So the two fields get tied together. They get interlaced with each other to make a electromagnetic wave. So this was the electric field, this was the magnetic field. If it's accelerating, the two fields get hooked together to make an electromagnetic field, a electromagnetic wave. And so I've got this little demonstration here that I want you to watch. Okay, so go to the internet and if you can, type in all of that and then you've got your choice that it will show you the electric field if it's not moving you can then click on it so that the charge is moving at a constant speed, and then you can observe what does, what happens to that electric field. And then you can make it oscillate. So you can take that charge, and when you click on it, it will, it's gonna go up and down. And then when it goes up and down, you'll notice that it starts to generate waves. And those waves are electromagnetic waves. So charged particles, when they accelerate, are gonna produce light. And they can produce any of these different kinds of light. All right, the next thing is, how do we visualize this? And so you cannot see this, 
okay so you cannot see this picture with your eyes so this is a representation of what light is so light is an oscillating electric and magnetic field so you have the electric field in this particular picture here you have the electric field going up and down like this and then the magnetic field is going side to side so it's going behind this and then it's coming back out and then it goes behind this like that so that the magnetic field is sideways and it's going in and out as the electric field is going up and down so that's why we say it's an electromagnetic field and then the distance from here to here that would be the wavelength of that particular uh, type of light now what would happen if you reached in and you pull out the electric field part well the light would go away so light cannot exist without both the electric and the magnetic fields they both have to be there in order to be able to generate light okay and then the last statement there is light is both a particle and a wave so if you lived back in the time of sir isaac newton he would have said that light is a wave what's the big deal okay and he was right so light is a wave meaning it's got a wavelength and it's got a frequency so it's very wavy but in the, the turn of the 20th century in the 1900s albert einstein showed that light is also a particle and so he called them these little particle things a photon so pretend that it's raining outside and so if you go outside when it's raining you're going to be pelted by individual droplets of water so similarly the sun is pelting you with individual little particles of light which we call a photon so they're teeny tiny and they are individual particles of light called a photon well now this is just something else that I want to add to the discussion so you would not be tested on this but I do want to mention that later another person thought that this idea was asymmetrical so that light was both a, a particle and a wave but then he looked at a pen and said to himself well this thing behaves like a particle when I throw it I wonder if this thing is also a wave and it turned out that he was right so if you were to take this thing and throw it through the air you can't see it but this thing would actually be going up and down as it moved through the air so that this thing would have a certain frequency and it would have a certain wavelength associated with it so matter which is composed of atoms is both a wave and a particle and light is both a wave and a particle so if you're more interested in, in learning about that then uh, you can go to the internet and go to uh, quantum mechanics where they discuss those properties of light and matter okay uh, let's take a break and when we come back we're going to talk about some properties of electromagnetic waves.